Hi. So my first slide was going to be all this, but um, Emphis did a really great job introducing me. So um, I run a tech support team, about 150 agents now, and we have about 400,000 customers all around the world, 24-7 support. And this is going to be important because this is a bit of a context um, for the, the tips I'm going to give you um, later. For a bit of uh, personal context, I am Gen X. Um, I grew up in Europe. I'm single, and I'm in a tech leadership position. This is all going to kind of make sense later. Uh, this presentation is about work-life balance, which I didn't even know was a thing until it became a problem for me. So, and that is not me, but it could be because I kind of felt like that throughout the years, trying to figure out my own work-life balance and the balance um, for my team. Lightning talk, 50 minutes, going to go fast. I'm going to share some do's and don'ts. And they are going to be somewhat specific um, to my role and how my team functions, but I hope that you find some um, useful examples here. So first, let's do the do's. Figure out who you are and what are your core values. Um, digging into why you are who you are will also help. This is basically where you come from, your past environments, your old managers. This is something that you can build on. Or if you hate it because of the examples that you experienced before, you can do a 180 and create your own foundation to move away from all that. And of course, your life is going to keep happening and it's going to keep adding to um, this work-life balancing act, basically. So do understand the company culture where you work and understand how the roles are defined. Um, you as an individual, as a manager, do not exist in a vacuum, so you need to understand where you work. Um, assess quickly if you do or do not belong to this environment, because ideally where you work should align with your personal values. Um, in my case, after, uh, after I finished college, um, I knew that I needed to find something solid and long term because that's what my family role models did, and that's what I knew how to do. So I set out to do that, and I failed <laughs> the first um, option that I picked. I left after six months because I realized that we just weren't a match. However, my second one, I'm still there, and this is my 20th year at the same company, and I'm very fortunate that I've been working. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's a big deal. Like, 20 years in a tech company is, like, huge, and I know I'm not even the oldest tenured person in the company. I work in a very supportive um, environment that takes care of its people, and that makes a big difference. Um, so understand that you need to leave room for change. Like, maybe you figured it out, you have a good balance, but your life and needs will change. So um, that's the leave room part. Uh, at the beginning, when I started, I was like, work, work, work. I was fine, no break, I don't need it, work is fulfilling, love it, work all, all the time. Later, I realized that work was okay, but uh, there were other options for me to fulfill my needs to achieve whatever I wanted to achieve or to be happy. So I was able to adjust a little bit and added more life to the balance. Uh, for example, I love to travel and we have a good vacation allowance, so my workplace basically encouraged and supported my wanderlust, and I created a sort of new balance, um, but I wasn't done. Uh, because due to my nature and the nature of my work, I couldn't completely switch off. It's tech support 24-7, manager position, and I felt like I was responsible for everything, I internalized the SLAs, and it started affecting my personal relationships, and then my relationship would work, and I almost didn't realize it until it was too late. I was feeling resentful and responsible and alone, and I felt like the, my peers didn't feel the same way and they didn't care. So that's something that I needed to rethink and change my perspective on that and recognize my own limitations as a human being. So um, try not to get yourself into a position where um, anything makes or, break, makes or breaks on your availability. So you need to um, train, mentor, delegate, communicate, and most importantly, you need to trust the people that you rely on because somebody else needs to take care of the work 
so you can have your life. Um, and of course, work is just work, um, which is obvious for some people, but not for others. Um, bad decisions do have consequences, but they can be also used as learning opportunities, and in the grand scheme of things, it probably won't matter as much. But all this needs to come from above. Leadership needs to um, model this behavior. Now, let's do a couple of do's on how to be the right kind of manager to uh, help your team with their relationship with a work-life balance. Because you as a manager, you're in a position when you affect people's lives. And you can accidentally impact them in a negative way. Um, and while you don't have to constantly stand in attention, um, be aware of your influence and try, not to best, uh, try best not to model the wrong behavior. So remember what I mentioned about um, finding the right environment for your values. If you hire or manage other people, help them do the same. Uh, they need to also understand the company they are entering or working in and the expectations of their role. And that means that some people will not align with what the expectations are, and that's totally okay because there are places for everybody um, in other, you know, other environments. Like, remember how I left the workplace after six months because I was like, this is not for me, but then my second workplace, I'm there for 20 years. So it's possible to find the right places. Get to know your team. I, I feel like this is the most important thing that you can do as a manager. Uh, you need to find out who they are, um, what motivates them, uh, what are their baselines, and what are their boundaries. Talk to them. You know, you can do one-on-ones, you can do team building events. Um, all those things are familiar for managers. Um, knowing these baselines and boundaries will help you recognize when they go outside that baseline, and that's when you start asking questions. Because while we know that not everybody needs to be a top performer, some people are, so when they start acting like not like that, um, then you need to figure out what's going on and you need to find a way to offer assistance and bring them back up. Um, so as a personal note here, <laughs> I used to be a really, really bad manager. I know one person here um, in the audience who uh, remembers that. And uh, one of the best things that I did is to get to know my people get to know who they are, what are their values, and what is um, their relationship with work-life balance, and stop applying my own template on everybody. Another way to, to get to know your people, especially if you work with different cultures, like we do, uh, we have seven different countries on our teams now, is to, to try and, and, and understand the different cultures that make up your team, because all of them will have a little bit of different approach to work and um, you know, just stay curious and work with HR if you have a team and they can help with the basics or do social events and, and talk to them and figure out who they are. So now that you've figured out the boundaries, um, make sure that you respect them, yours as well. And if ever there is a need to go outside those boundaries, it can be okay, but you need to communicate, you need to acknowledge and you need to appreciate when you cross those things. Um, don't just like barge in there. Um, and then there might be people who don't know how to set those boundaries on your team or don't know how to say no. And um, maybe they don't think they can say no because you're the boss or they just really, really love to be over-engaged like I used to be when I started. And it's your job as a manager to identify those people at risk or those situations at risk and um, help them set those boundaries before they burn out. And um, you know, there might be other people on your peer level who do the same because it's really tempting to go to people for help who never say no. So talk to your peers as well. And you need to set and model um, availability expectations. Try not to message people outside their shift. I know it's tempting and there's all these things that you can use to talk to people, but there are tools that you can use to help. Like there is, you can schedule slacks, you can schedule emails, because even if you tell people when you send a message at 10 p.m. that you don't need an immediate answer, they're like, oh, shoot, the boss is working at 10 p.m., so maybe I should be working at 10 p.m. So uh, be mindful of, mindful of your impact and um, try to not model this very questionable behavior. Time away from work is also important to maintain the healthy work-life balance. And sometimes you, as a manager, struggle with the fact that there are not enough people on your team 
but that should not be the main or the only reason to deny uh, paid time off. So find whatever works, uh, find ways that work for your business and your team to allow your people to be um, away from uh, work when they need to be. Uh, for example, um, my team shuts off certain uh, channels during holidays and we communicate to the customers um, that we won't be available doing live chat, for example, during Christmas. So we have um, our team uh, can spend time with their families instead. So stay empathetic. A uh, couple of don'ts. Uh, do not assume that uh, people have the same relationship with work-life balance, even if they have the same job as you, or even if they used to have the same relationship as you. Because people grow and change at a different rate, and they deal with life at a different pace. Like, if you remember Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the pyramid, we move up and down those um, steps, and everybody deals with things differently. Some peop sometimes people need to step away from work. Sometimes they need to really step into work to deal with whatever is happening, just like you. Um, so keep an eye out. And uh, going back to get to know your team, the more you know about your team, the better you know your people, the better you will be able to uh, help them with these shifts. Um, <laughs> do not consider yours as the de facto work ethic or strong work ethic, because work ethic is basically just a set of personal values related to work. You're not the de facto person, which is what I thought when I started as a manager. And I was like, I wouldn't ask anything from them that I wouldn't do myself, so what's their problem? But that's not good. <laughs> that's a fallacy because all people are different people. So remember that. Um, and here's a quick reminder to be self-aware and try and model the right behavior for your team. But of course, you're a human being, so you will make mistakes. And, um, you know, reach out for help to those that you trust and keep going. So you did the work, you figured out your work-life balance, you are modeling consciously the right behavior, well done, everything's okay, we're done here. Not so fast. Um, this is one of my favorite quotes here. Life is not static, so never assume that the work that you're doing towards work-life balance is ever fully done. Because... Stuff happens, and uh, yeah, we all kind of remember what this did to our work-life balance. Um, so let's try this again. <laughs> Give yourselves a break. Um, things got a little more complicated on the tightrope, and um, when COVID hit, we gave up the offices and went fully remote, and during the beginning, I felt like I had to almost start from scratch trying to figure out my balance. It took me about six months, really, to adapt and adjust and move on. Um, so here are some basic tips that I learned. Uh, I'm in a very privileged position. I have a separate room for home office. Good for me. That's not the standard. Uh, but even if you don't, uh, some sort of physical separation will help. Um, if you can do it at home, great. If you can go co-working spaces, even better. There is another way that I solved my problem. Like I said, I like traveling. So I picked other cities to work from, mixing travel with work. But I know that's not somebody, not, every, not everybody can do this or want to do this. But it's, you know, it helped me. You just need to find what works for you. Mental and emotional separation is also very important. You need to find activities that demarcate life from work, even if you can't fully physically separate. Um, with no commute or, you know, having to dress up for the office, I would just roll out of bed and um, I would work until dark. And uh, that was not good, especially when I forgot to eat all day. Um, I needed to set some time for me in the morning and set alarms in the evening to stop working. And this is how you can help your team um, during these trying times. You need to remain curious, supportive, and accepting, and take their, consider take their circumstances into um, consideration when communicating about remote um, expectations. And uh, even if you're struggling, you still need to pay attention to your team because you're responsible. But you need to communicate. You need to make them understand uh, what the new requirements are, and you need to set and manage those expectations uh, based on the, the new reality 
I guess. Do not micromanage, just pay attention. Um, and remember you work with people, so try and foster some sort of like um, community environment with remote events if possible. Great, you did it again, <laughs> so good job. Well, <laughs> you will have to do it again and again because circumstances will keep changing and change is never easy, so. These are something to uh, remember when you go into the next changes. Pay attention to your team. Do not assume their circumstances. Communicate the expectations and keep everybody a break yourself as well. And quickly, we're bringing in some takeaways of um, what I found the most important to try and figure out your own work-life balance and to, to help your team do the same and model the right behavior. And I think I am out of time. So here's a quick thank you for listening to this. And if you have any questions, those are all the availabilities. And I'm happy to expand on all the ways that I did it wrong at the beginning and the things that I learned to, you know, to be the right kind of manager and leader for my team. So thank you.